Hello everyone, we are group 3 here to convert your presentation for Kami Automotive Inc. So let me start by introducing my team members. We have Ruchik Patel here, Karthik Parir Selvo, Hari Shivakumar and myself within John. So let me start by introducing the company to you. Kami Automotive Inc, the full form is Canadian Automotive Manufacturing Corporation. It is located in Ingersoll, 50 kilometers from London, Ontario. It is owned by General Motors and employs 300 employees in the in 4,000 feet, square feet of area. Currently, the product that is being manufactured here is the second generation of Chevrolet units. So the commodity we have chosen is alloy steel, and it is used for the automotive frame body and is constructed using alloy steel. Alloy steel is a combination of manganese, silicon, nickel, titanium, copper, and chromium. It is very cheap compared to other materials that are available right now. And the characteristics will be explained by Karthik here. Thank you, Nidin. Now we'll explain to you about the characteristics of the alloy steel. The characteristics like corrosion resistance. The corrosion resistance is very good when compared to the other materials like aluminium and then other some materials which are used in the markets. So um, most of the manufacturing companies like Cami and Ford, everyone they're using um, alloy steel as a main material and then the yield strength are also very low uh, because of this uh, the manufacturers can pro uh, make the production very easily uh, as per the design um, and then the buildability um, the building for the building uh, it is very easy for do that like uh, some of the buildings like thick building big building it can be easily attached and then uh, it is very difficult to take out so most of the companies they are using um, alloy steel as the main thing and then um, the brittleness of the material is also very good when compared to the other and the brittleness is very low um, because uh, if any act for example I can say like if any accident happen uh, in, in the roadways um, the brittleness of the material is very low so it will not break the car and it will make more damage uh, to the uh, person who inside the car and then the formability. It is very easy to bend the material uh, when compared to the other materials which are used by the other companies. Uh, so it is easy for manufacturing. And then now I explain to you about the technical terms uh, which are used uh, in, in this uh, company. Uh, like uh, after getting the um, alloy steel from the supplier end, um, the company uh, <coughs> inspectors will do some of the chemical testing and then Corrosion testing, mechanical testing, and uh, dimension testing. First, I'll explain to you about the chemical testing. The chemical testing, like FTRI, uh, which is the infrared testing, which is used to know about the what are the chemicals uh, inside the material and what are the proportion. I mean, uh, what are the percentage of materials involved in that uh, material of uh, that material, and then the corrosion testing, which is used to whether whether the um, product is well corrosion or not. And then uh, the mechanical testing like building testing and then the checking the oddness of the material um, and the dimension testing is very important. After getting the material from the supplier end, the inspector has to inspect the dimension of the, material, of the alloy steel, whether it is uh, in the bundle like rolling size or in the plate size, he has to me uh, measure the everything. And then finally, the non-destructive testing. The non-destructive testing, the name is there is it will not uh, damage the part of the body uh, of the material uh, with the help of the ultrasonic uh, sound and then the ultrasonic waves. Uh, it will uh, pass through the material of the uh, material. I mean, uh, the alloy steel, and then it will. Uh, it will. It can, we can easily measure the porosity and then the crackness with the help of uh, this test. Next, the supply list will be explained by Harish. Thank you, Karthik. Uh, our team came up with uh, three supplier list. Uh, first one is MST Steel, uh, Steel uh, Corporation. Already they got uh, ISO certification, which is uh, 9002 and 9000, and uh, 16949 is to 2009. Usually they will supply only tier one and tier two suppliers, uh, and which especially for the automotive companies. And they have uh, different certifications uh, available for their advantages. Uh, they have different uh, certification. Then as uh, our team came up with the brand of steel uh, industry, uh, uh, industries private limited. It's a uh, it's a domestic leader uh, which is located in Stratford, Ontario, and they are uh, leaders for the past four decades. And uh, they are the available steels are uh, 300 series, 77 stainless steel coil, uh, stream stock, and uh, 0.35 is available. The next two one is uh, infra metal, uh, which is, this one is uh, their main uh, manufacturer and distributor of alloy steels. 
and uh, they have their big advantages the, they are producing steel in different grades uh, which is the biggest advantage in this company and the uh, next the uh, second advantage is the just in time delivery uh, the third uh, the second next part is uh, packaging uh, in packaging we are uh, like there are three different types of packaging is there uh, the first one is tin plate the second one is chromium coated plate steel and uh, black plate uh, thin plate is like a, it's a thin sheet which is uh, thickness is 0.5 mm and uh, which is uh, rolled with the uh, uh, aluminium uh, uh, like alloy steel and the uh, second one is the chromium coated steel uh, which is a layer of chrome thinner and uh, it's uh, the same pattern will be continued for the it will be rolled over the steel and the third one is the black plate which is a combination of a uh, uh, thin plate and chromium coated steel and the, the next slides will be explained by Ruchi. Thank you, Arish. I'll be explaining you the price range of the alloy steel, in which we can see that in the year 2015, in the month of May, there was the 32 USD per 100 LB. The price got suddenly decreased up to 23.75 USD per 100 LB. And in the month and in the year of 2016, January. Where we can see the suddenly increase in the price was seen up to 33 USD per 100 LB in the month of June 2016 and after that the fluctuation was then at there observed and at present the price is 34.5 USD per 100 LB. So these are the price trends which we can see but the factors affecting the price trends are raw material cost, supply chain, supply demand and higher demand, the low supply equal to higher price in which Shipping cost, maturity of the market, cost of the energy. In which raw material, raw material is there, there are silicon, chromium, nickel, magnesium. Those are the factors which affect the alloy steel. And in the supply and demand, the higher the demand, the lower the supply. Which we can see that when the demand, demand is higher and the supply is low, the price will get increased. And in the shipping cost, it depends on the mode of the shipment and the distance and the product which we are shipping and maturity of the cost in which the demand and the supply both the things will be in the equilibrium state at that time the maturity of the market is seen and in the cost of the energy where we can see the production cost, manufacturing cost those are the things which affect the cost of the energy and these are the references which we used for the our commodity project and other references too thank you for your attention